website, woodturners.com. we got a couple of things coming up today. Um, I want to show you a couple of tricks and hints on how to hold work and how not to hold work. And then I've got some photographs to share from you. And if you saw it on the three channels we put this on, we're now putting this on three channels. Uh, Captain Eddie Castellan, Eddie Castellan, and Worldwide Woodturners all on YouTube. And it'll tell you how to join up and get our newsletter and everything else. And it's all put on by volunteers. That's right. My boss points out that we're not making a buck off this. And she likes it that way. Because I also got no budget. <clears throat> okay. Also, we're going to mix in some photographs of work you've done. Because you're the finest woodturners in the world. And I asked you a while back to send me photographs of your shop. We'll cover that in a minute, but first, I need to hold something. So, hold on. I have a project I've been working on. I want to take a bowl I turned, and I want to turn it around and put it on something to turn it to finish up the outside and start to finish up the bottom. I like them turned all the way. I'm really not a great fan of the saw. This is wood turning, not wood sawing. Um, but you can clean it up a whole lot. If you know how to hold it, and if you're gentle and you know good slices. Now this is a piece of laminated panel board or whatever. It's, it's got an X in the name, and I can't remember what it is. But it's, they put it on roofs. Roofs. And uh, I put it all together and turned the bowl. Then I forgot it and left it outside for a couple of weeks. Like eight. And it has swollen up a little bit. Yes, there's some irregularities. But you know what? That's texture. And I couldn't get that texture before. But I have it now. My boss thinks it should be slick. So I have to return it. How do I return a bowl? Now, does this work if you turn in a fresh one? Not reconditioning one. If you're turning a fresh bowl, how do you return a bowl? Well, I want to put this up here and show you. This is my one-way stronghold chuck. It could be a brick mark. It could be... Uh, a, a, a barracuda. It could be, could be, could be, could be. It's a chuck. All right? And I don't really need a chuck, but I'm putting it in a chuck. This is it. And I have a little dovetail glued on the back of this block. And this block is as simple as can be. I have the tenon to the right size using my tenon jig because I don't want to be under grabbing or over grabbing. So I'm going to put that in there and snug it up a little bit. And for right now, I can't, I'm not allowed to turn the machine on. It's the freaking rules. So, I'm going to tighten it up. Now, this is a PVC clean-out from the hardware store. That's right, from the Ace Hardware store. Well, gee, they're not nice anymore. But, hey, it's from the hardware store. And I put it on there, and I took a little piece of rubber gasket material, a little foam with gasket material, and put a surf face on it. Now that's going to make it softer. But hey, you don't have that. Right? So now you're going to make do with what you do have. And that's where Worldwide Wood Turners comes in play. We're, if you have to, or you need to, or you've got to, yada, 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 you have a faceplate, put a block on it, groove the block, put this on it, put the foam on it, and you can go. And you can put this through your vacuum chuck system. Oh, you don't have it. What the hell? You don't have a vacuum system? Oh, man. All right. Well, we don't really need a vacuum system. Man, y'all, sometimes you make me earn my keep. I'm glad I'm free. But I'm going to... i got to move stuff out the way now, so i got a little room to work here. You don't have a vacuum system. Um... I'm moving projects that we're going to do for worldwide wood turners. These are things that you've suggested, you've asked for, and they have some technique in them. And the secret to this entire thing is developing technique. Now, I have the piece, have this, have the gasket. If I don't have the gasket, what can I do? Wa -la, la la! This is like a mouse mat for your computer. Yeah, how about that? We well, have that term these days, mouse mat. Uh, but it's a piece of 1 8 to 3 16 foam, and it's all waffled and everything. They, they sell this where they sell those nice white painted shelves 
at Home Depot and Lowe's. And you put it on that painted shelf, and when you put little things on it, it won't fall through the shelf. Because that's the only trick on that. All right? But that's what this is sold as. It's like a heavy-duty draw liner. When we were kids, we had a different name for that. But Mom always lined the drawers with something because you didn't want to put good stuff on top of wood. Um, and it got dirty and all this stuff. So that's what I'd use. I, I'd cut a piece and put it right here over the front. And I would six-side or eight-side it to reduce some of the overage. Okay? So I've got this. And that is going to protect my bowl when I put my bowl up against it like this. You see that? It's pretty simple. Now, if I leave it long, look at all that flapping around stuff, it's going to be out of balance. So I want to cut a piece. But throw, throw it away after you cut it. Put a hole in the middle of it and stick it on a nail. Put it up on a overhead so you can use it again later when you need to hold something that's five inches. Or be real smart and tie it to this. But that's real smart. Okay. Now, we're going to do that to hold it. Now, I'm going to use my rubber mat, the rubber thing I have here, because I made this to go in a vacuum system. There's a hole in there. Can you see the hole? You see the hole. And it goes through to my vacuum system. And I've got two of them. I've got one that is a... Oh, I can't see it right now. It's a Pittsburgh, made in China, a 2.5 CFM vacuum pump. I bought it at Harbor Freight. If you got a front, it's an old air, uh, air conditioning mechanic that might have a worn out or barely usable vacuum pump. Mooch it from them. Most times you just need a cleaning. Or you can get, there's a thing with two Venturis. Wood, somebody makes it. I'll come up with the name of it. And it uses your air compressor to pressurize the line and create a vacuum. Yeah, it's cool how it works. It's so simple. You, when, when After you pay for it, you're going to say, man, why did I make that? I can't come up with parts. That's all. All right, I'm back to this. This is going to go on that pad. All right, I'm getting rid of my, my, my phone bag because I don't need it. Okay? And it was sleeping outside anyway. Then I'm going to bring up my tailstock. Now, on my tailstock right here, and I'm going to look over there and see you. Right here, I've got what I call a soft touch. Now, that is a piece that I turned and threaded three-quarter ten to fit on my revolving center. All right? Now, if you don't have a revolving center, you can make up your own version of the soft touch. It has to spin with the lathe, and you have to have a center point that matches. Because if it's off, it's going to do this. That's no fun. I mean, look at me doing it. It's no fun. But then you can put it on there, and it's soft touching it, and I can work this around. I'm looking right across this thing here, and I'm going to see the high and lows. And remember, I'm just coming in to clean it up and sand it. So I'm going to bump it around a little bit, and then put a little more pressure on my soft touch. That is not going to mark my lumber, or my turn piece, or whatever. It's going to put a little pressure on it, so now I can turn the machine on, and I can sand this. I can finish this, I can trim this, and I'm going to have a little bitty bitty button at the bottom. I'll take that off of the knife later. But that'll hold it. And that's for returning. Returning. Okay? Now, let's just say I've got another piece. Come on, work with me here. This is bullet resistant plastic I took out of a bank that I built. Uh, I'm sorry. They gave me from a bank I built. I didn't take anything from the bank. i got to be real clear about that. Whew, people get finicky about that. All right. It's bullet-resistant plexiglass because there is nothing bulletproof. Ask a marksman um, or an old ammo troop. Me. Nothing's bullet-resistant. Okay. This is the piece, and I want to go in and clean up these grooves and marks and stuff that's on it. Now, I want to turn it this way with the open side out, bring up my, my, my rest and balance it out until it's running true and it, it, there's a secret to it. Time. It takes a few moments to pull it and get it around and you'll get it running true. Now I can clean up this outside. I can go around to the inside, to almost the center. Almost. But remember, I'm cleaning it up. And I can do some work with, with a, a wet pad. And then when I get that done, I'm going to flip it around 
and go, this is tricky. But you got to understand how tricky this is. I'm turning around, bring the tailstock back up, recenter it up. Recenter it up? I don't know if we need to say that. All right, I'm going to center it up. And I'm using, again, the soft touch. The soft touch now is not going to scratch my material. And this is plastic. It will scratch. You can't put the point in it. That's, that's bulletproof. All right. So now I'm going to turn it around. And I can sand this in something. I can sand this outside and come all the way down to just about the center. And when I get done, maybe I'll take my pad and go my four, six, eight thousand and whatever. Four, six, eight, one thousand. I'm going to take using eight thousand grit paper. Um, and clean it all up. Orbital. Instead of ch -ch 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 putting lines in it. Remember, the light has to pass through the cover. The coating, the finish, or anything else. It, the light must pass through that in order for you to get the chatoyance, the beauty, the cat's eye of the wood. It has to pass through your finish. This one has no finish. So scratch on the inside will be seen from the outside. Which I'm going to get rid of scratches on the inside and the outside. Now, my vacuum chuck was working. My Pittsburgh made in China vacuum chuck. I put my rod in, put the gasket on, bring this up, get it balanced out, and then when I pulled it away, I could clean up that center. Because I'm doing that cutting and slicing. Pardon me, I got the hiccups. I don't need any more than light pressure. That's when I'm going to generate some light pressure to do it. So, and that's if I use the giant vacuum chuck. But just between us, if you don't have it, you don't need it. You can work around it. So if you make a little soft touch to go on your head on your tail side, and you make a little, well, that's really a soft touch on this side too, to push the bowl up against, then you can turn the bottom and it'll be beautiful all the way around. There's more coming right here. WorldwideWoodTurners.com Reholding pieces. I have a saying, if you can hold it, you can turn it. Reholding is something that mystifies a lot of guys. And they really believe they need a vacuum chuck or the scroll jaws. If you've got the scroll jaws, if you've got the a long worth ch chuck that you built, um, then you can do this by holding it in a chuck. But holding this side to do that is sometimes awkward. It can be done. It's just a little awkward. We'll cover it here at Worldwide Wood Turners. But I'm, what I'm trying to tell you, and I'm telling you, is uh, if you can hold it, you can turn it. Miracles happen every day. I mean, look at this. I went to the shop, this morning barber shop, and asked to get a mohawk cut. A mohawk. Yeah, the guy charged me $20 for this. And I said, it doesn't look like the mohawk on the picture. And he said, well, that guy's got hair. It's just cruel. It's just cruel. Okay, you've seen my shop. Have I seen your shop? Ah, that's the deal. Okay, I want to rig up for another demonstration. In the meantime, I want you to look at this. This is from about 15 guys who have shared the idea and showed me what their shop looks like because we don't all have a big shop. And most of them are more organized than this one is. Take a look.
just getting into this and it's going to expand well here's the first one if you like to send me photographs to your shop you see what I'm using your first name your last initial I'm not saying where you are who you are what the address is and two animals won't come bar banging at your door it's for you to give ideas about how your shop works compared to your friend's shop or to a guy that you think is an awesome turner that shop didn't make what he made he made right here what he made so if you got a photograph of your shop send it to me at this email address nowhere else this email address worldwide woodturners at gmail.com that's where you send the photographs now if you have some artwork which we'll cover in a few moments you send them to the same address and artwork all right but it's time to get back to demonstrations and talk about things I'm setting up to show you something before I get fussed at to collect my chuck key and a handle in the chuck which you're not supposed to do if the blade is under power it's a good way to get hurt if you're looking for a good way but when you hang with guys and you talk to guys about wood turning that's what this is all about worldwide wood turners you can share ideas tricks tips hints and problems so I had lunch with a friend a dear old friend he wants to remain anonymous and I told Ronnie that's okay with me um, but he was turning the other day and he had a block of wood and his chuck was on and he said you know what I'm going to do I'm going to take my and I don't have one around that I can grab right now or reach I'm going to take my spur center and I'm going to just put it in my chuck and tighten down and grab it and hold that spur center in my that Mort Morse taper spur center and that chuck and then bring my wood up to it then I'll have to take my chuck off a little bit of problem just a little the energy to squeeze the jaws was compacting, compacting on that more taper right and you had hardened jaws against the hardened other so you're going to get minimum slip but when you do it's going to be a biting slip all right number two it's a Morse taper. At what point on a taper do you think you have a good uniform setting that's uniform? It ain't. Your taper doesn't match their taper, their taper doesn't match your taper. Not a brilliant idea. Number three, he had a catch. Whoa! Talk about a catch. But that wasn't it. He got past the catch, still had it on a spur, rounded a piece out, and put a tenon on it. Then he went to put it back in his chuck, and this would not move. It had loaded down with that binding piece being pushed in, and he had a hell of a time getting the wrench to open it. Almost enough to break the wrench or the device or him or the chuck or him. So if you do this, that's careless. Really, he now knows it, and he knows there's other ways to do it. Now, one of the other ways to do it, I have here a. See, I took the key out because that's what it's to do. I have a step center. And my step center has got a little flat spot right here in the middle. This is tapered. This is tapered. This is not tapered. We closed up on right? Okay. Well, when I close my jaws down, they're going to be on this not tapered spot. And I'm going to have a back shoulder to keep from coming out and a front shoulder to keep from going in. And I'm going to hug down on there and I'll have a better grip. And I'm holding onto a round to a round. Four points around, pardon me. So I get a better grip. Now, I have a spur center up here I bought from somebody that's got the same shoulder on it. But, and it's always a but, remember, if you need to hold a piece of wood, there are other ways to do it using your chuck. I have it one way, and I'm not saying you can't live without it. I can live without it. I have probably 20 chucks around this place. Um, but they make attachments for this. One of them is a spur center that fits into the chuck for the right size and guess what it's got a flat spot right in here and that flat spot goes around and there's a shoulder where it won't come out and the shoulder where it won't go back and it gets gripped on by the four pads and held in place and oriented and runs pretty true I got two lengths of it this is a long one and they do make them bigger I mean some guy sent me a picture yesterday one that's four inches around it's got adjustable pins on it if you might need to a log if you need to they're beautiful if you can hold it you can turn it the other way would be with the woodworm screw. Now, if you got a screw chuck, 
I have that one. I just saw it a minute ago. If you got a screw chuck that's a, a mass with a bolt coming through it, and you can make those, just be careful what you pick because a lot of stress on it. Or you can get the woodworm screw that comes with your chuck. That woodworm screw. And the same thing happens. You insert it. You get it in the right position. It's got a shoulder to keep it from going too deep. It's got a shoulder to keep it from coming out. Woodworm screw becomes part of the chuck. That is an excellent idea. In fact, it eliminates the woodwork chuck thing if you had the woodworm screw. It's strong. It's coarse thread. It bites. It holds. It does what you need it to hold. What it doesn't do is hurt your chuck or your Morse taper because, see, when my buddy, who's remaining anonymous, takes his out, he has to go take a hard look at it now to make sure that he didn't put some lands or some grooves on it. Is lands and grooves the same thing? Lands or ridges, maybe. But he's going to, if it marinalized, if it moved, he's going to get that off. Or it's going to bite into his headstock and mess up his headstock. So you see, it is a real careful connection. And you want to keep it clean. I use my little green scrubby thing for cleaning mine out before I put something in it. Because if there's trash, then you drive it in. You're driving trash on top of trash. So you just, it's a little rubber. I, I don't know where it's at. But it's a little bit of rubber thing I got at Craft Supplies. And it's it'll clean the inside of the Morse taper. And keep it clean. And whatever you do, don't oil it, don't lube it, don't wax it, don't spray the WD crap on it. Nothing. It's got to be clean. It's a steel-to-steel -steel friction contact. All right. So let's see. We learned from Ronnie, I mean my friend, that we don't grab a Morse taper with our chuck. That if we have to grab something, we will grab a Morse taper with a shoulder or a spur center or a wood turn screw. And we can hold those in this chuck the right way when we start turning wood. Turning wood, it's a misnomer. We don't just turn wood. We turn plastic, we turn brass, we turn pewter, we turn aluminum, we turn epoxy, we turn mixes, we turn... We, if it spins, we turn it. If I got tools harder than that metal, I'm turning it. I made rings for my granddaughters out of... Out of uh, can I say this? I made them out of quarters? Yeah. And, and they came out really nice. Um, if the Secret Service takes me away in a minute or two, you know, I couldn't have said that. All right. But I could spin it. I could hold it and I could spin it. Getting, get this. I held it with double stick tape and a soft touch. Double stick duct tape that I picked up at Lowe's. Sometimes you can't find it. It's in a carpet section or the tape section or an odd section because... Some of these retailers partner up with a company to buy X, Y, and Z paint. And if this product's not in the X, Y, Z book, it doesn't get handled. They don't go to R or P or somebody to buy it. Uh, they're trying to consolidate their buys, get their best buying power, best shipping power, best delivery power, and all that. That's why you run across stores that don't handle things. It's just a convenience thing on how they can get it in. They have to make a buck. We all have to. All right. So I did that with a quarter, and then I spun it, and I used my carbide cutter, and I tilted it on a slight angle. That's right, a slight angle. And I did what I'm calling a bias cut. Now, I'm not permitted to turn the machines on this week. Um, limitations are almost off, and that's my problem. It's not your problem. I'm getting better. I really am. At least I believe I am. It's the drugs. That's what it is. All right. Um, but... You do a bias cut. You take a soft cut on a slope. And I keep explaining it to guys, and they tell me, I've never heard of a bias cut. Well, guess what? Ten years ago, nobody heard of a negative rake scraper. And if it's not being used as a scraper, why the hell call it one? So you can take a carbide cutter. It's got a razor sharp edge on it. And you can plow. Did I say plow? Plow into that wood. And shaving's going to come out. It has to. The soft one gives up. But if you kick that tool up on a slight angle, and I got my left shoulder of the tool down, right shoulder up, 
in one angle? I don't know. But I'm retuning my cutter to make a slice rather than a gouge. Slice it. Don't plow it. Slice it. Don't gouge it. Slice it. Slice it. That's what you're looking for. I want you to practice that on your lathe without a project. Chuck up something. I like soft. Okay? Because if you don't do it right, it's going to pull instead of soft. I dare. And slice. I don't know what I'm talking about. But if you practice, you can watch that cutter and see how it cuts. Now, I'm a great fan of YouTube. That's what we are now. Okay? But there's not a lot of truths and a lot of work on YouTube. And sometimes you see something from a guy who's due to a show to make you stick around and buy the XYZ tool or whatever. Um, I'm not into that. I really don't believe you need carbide. I sell more than anybody else in the world, I believe. But I don't believe you need it. I think you can get along without it. Um, I think you need to know how to sharpen your tools. And you need to learn how to tool cuts. If you'll do that, you'll turn out some great looking work. And speaking of great looking work, how's that for a segue, huh? All right, speaking of great looking work, I've got pictures sent to us by wood turners and worldwide wood turners members, bona fide, I almost said dues paying, they don't pay dues, bona fide members of worldwide wood turners. Take a look at this art. This is awesome. Some of the finest wood turning in the entire world, right here, done by people just like you. Well, you're a little better than that. But people just like you turn these projects. If you have a project that you turned, and you want to send me a photograph, I welcome it, and we'll share it right here and in our newsletter and everything else. All you have to do is email me that photograph to worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. Nowhere else. Worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. And send me the photographs. Send me multiple photographs. But hey, Gary, put your last name on it, man. Come on. I, you know, I, I get a photograph. I can't say that guy in Dubuque, you know, because there's a lot of guys in Dubuque. So make sure your name appears on an email, not email address, on an email. Joe, you, know, you send me a picture of your prettiest work in the world, right? Yeah. So send it on to me, we'll share it, and we'll learn from what you're doing. It's the same way that we're going to build. We're going to build on what you're doing. Worldwide Wood Turns, I'm going to beat the drum one more time. It's a club for you, by you, all about you. And uh, my boss tells me, I can't tell you that. I can't say it's all about you. That's not right. But it is right. It's the truth. It really is. I've been around wood turning clubs for over 20 years. And there's a reluctance of wood turners to share information, to share technique, to share design. Because, hey, I did it. I'd rather you not do it because you're going to liquidate the market. What market? I don't sell this stuff. I give it away. How can you give away free? Beat free. You know, I don't pay anybody to take it. But what we're doing here at Worldwide Wood Turners is getting the information. We get your photographs. We see your shop. We don't want to know what your bank account number is. But we get all that stuff, and then we share it with other wood turners so they have something to work with. I got a picture of a guy the other day that has his lathe in a closet, and it's so small, he's got a hole in a drywall on one side so he can reach around to change the belts. That small. And that's his big shop. You see, sometimes we got to do what we got to do with what we have. And that's what we're going to do. So if you'd like to become a member, do so. If you'd like to pay dues, it doesn't happen here. You want to have a membership card? Not happening. It's open to everybody all the time, and all the want is your commitment to participate. I caught hell last month because I did one with no turning in it. 
And the guy said, man, this is boring. I'm going someplace else. Bye. See you later. Some health issues, mine, not yours, have cut me away from the shop. I'm coming back. But with all that in mind, we're here sharing information. And that's where I want from you. So send me your tip, tricks. Send me your tips. Tell me about something. I got one tonight from a guy that saw something I did probably 12 years ago or so about an air-fed drill bit for hollowing out green wood. Air-fed, not air-operated. Air-fed drill bit to hollow out a log. Now, I've got one. I need to go back to my supplier and find out what it's called. But I'm going to show it to you next time we get together. Oh, and sometimes. Um, pretty soon times. Uh, we may not be able to do complete programming right now. We're doing our best. And I'm waiting on you to send me some input. And I've got a great advisory board. You want to be part of the advisory board? Let's make a deal right here, right now, straight up. You want to be part of the advisory board? Oh, I've got to talk to you now. I heard that. Advisory board or advisory team. I don't want to say board because it's not a team. A team all gets together. A board gets elected. We're just all getting together in the advisory team. If you want to be part of our advisory team, all you have to do is become a member and input or output from our site and our newsletter. Yeah, it's just that simple. And we want your help. We want you to participate. Had a guy ask me, can I do an ink pen out of a kit without a kit? Yes. It's right there. Right over somewhere there. All right. I'm going to show you how to do that, and I want to get it done this week so you can use it for Christmas gifts. Because everybody needs a screwdriver. Did I say screwdriver? I hope I did. All right. Then I've got another little project that we want to do. But it's not just the turning. It's how we're going to drill it. How are we going to get that hole to be down the center? How are we going to attach the piece that we're stealing from apart from Harbor Freight? And how we're holding the whole thing to put a finish on it and then finishing it? It's a lot of math to this. Yeah, I know you didn't sign on for that, but hey, I need you help. Um, I'm, I was sitting outside the shop today waiting for my manager to come home. <sighs> and I was looking at a handle I put on a fence right here to lift a latch on a gate. I turned it last year and I quickly hit it with a CA finish and looked really good. It looked pretty good. The finish is completely warm. Completely warm. It's taking in moisture and it's causing the wood to move a little bit. What I missed was some steps on, steps on finishing that we want to cover. We're going to show you a strip of wood, and we're going to put as many different types and grades of finish we can on it. I'm not talking about the Marilax and the Valspar and the, the Minwax and the Zinser and the, all those. No, I'm going to talk about general products. Sealer, uh, coating, CA, Sealer CA coating, Sealer CA polyurethane. I can talk but we're going to show you the degrees and what happens because if you take a shortcut, nature doesn't. That's right. And if you got your heart and soul in it, I really hate to rechuck that spindle, that handle, and do it again. But people come to my shop and they pick that thing up, and I, I know, and in mind, they're going, "Ooh, I thought they put a finish on this." It's um, it's a, a it's a righteous thing. So we'll share that. You share what you have right here, every month, sometimes twice or three times a month, on WorldWideWoodTurners.com. Thanks for being with me today. I can't wait to get back in the shop with you. i got so many projects. What do you come